So this is the Gusanito Worm Tower. As you can see, I have the Worm Factory 360 there. It looks very similar. I've had this for many years. Um, the Worm Factory 360 I got for Christmas one year, but I have the Euros in here. Right now I don't have anything in there. I might take some of these and start a new bin there or I might get, you know, I might buy some Red Wigglers. I'm not sure yet. But they, you know, I didn't know if it was going to work, but it did. So it's time to harvest the poop now. And then I'll save it uh, for next winter to use in my garden. So I'm going to uncover this and see what I'm going to find. You're going to see whatever I'm going to see for the first time. I wear gloves because they say that the oils in your hands can harm the worms. I'm not sure if that's true, but I don't want to take a chance. So let's see. All right. We got some euros on the lid here. And I see a lot of babies. So that means that they're breeding, which is a good thing. And these are young worms. So let's see what it looks like in here. Let me see if I could bring you in closer. All right, let's see what I find in here. Well, right on the surface, I already see a worm egg. So this is what a worm egg looks like. See that little thing that looks like a little lemon? That's a worm egg. And when they get dark, they're about to hatch. Oh, there they are. Beautiful euros. These are some gorgeous worms. They really are. I love red wigglers, but these guys, they're my favorite. They're my favorite because they're big enough to go fishing with. Um, the material feels like I had paper in here and they ate it all. It feels okay. It doesn't feel that dry. So they did a great job composting this. Now European night crawlers are, they have big appetites. They really do. Um, just like the red wiggler I think has more of an appetite, but then they're smaller. So if you want a big fat worm that eats like a red wiggler, the yours are definitely for you. See that's a nice, that's a nice looking worm right there. Nice looking worm. Next spring I'll be selling some of these worms and I usually sell some of the castings after I um, pick out what castings I'm going to use for myself. Now this tray is obviously done so the one underneath here is most definitely done. So we're going to move to the bottom tray. Alright the tray underneath that one, let's see what this one looks like. This looks like it's completely done also. Ooh, I'm seeing a lot of eggs in here. Um, I know, I know euros, like they go down instead of um, like red wigglers or surface eaters. Uh, red, uh, European night crawlers go down. But for some reason, and I think it's because they were looking for food, they went up to the tray I put above them. So, yes, they go down, in theory, they do, and or people know that they do, but they also go up. That is a nice looking worm right there. Look at that. They're gorgeous. So they do. Now, castings like this, you know, worm castings, I think it must be the only poop in the world that doesn't have odor. <laughs> and believe me, if this had some kind of odor... I would not have it in my house. I would have it in the garage or in my greenhouse or something like that. So basically, this is how I start to harvest. I fluff it up first. Just to break up some clumps. And then I go and I get a sifter. And I'll show you. Now as far as sifters... I use this thing. This was an old Christmas present from someone that had like those soaps in it and the little washcloths and these little baskets. You could find these baskets at um, Walmart or any, you know, 
Walgreens or any of those stores. But when I got this and I used the products and I looked at this and I thought, man, that would be a great sifter for worms. I mean, us worm people, anytime you look at something, first thing you think of, oh, will that work for the worms? <laughs> so I've been using this one for years. It works great. Another thing you can use is when the worms go down because the light will bother them. I got this at the dollar store. It's a cat litter scooper and this thing I just go like this on the surface and see you can shake it the castings fall and the worms stay this one works fine too but I don't use this one until I know that all the worms have gone down away from the light because these little teeth you know I don't want to hurt them this one came I believe with my worm factory 360 great little um great little clawed shovel here i like it and this also came with the worm factory 360 this is same same concept as the cat thing when the worms go down you just scrape the top to get the castings out but i'm going to show you how i do it with the basket because of all the you know of all the ways i've done this to me that's the easiest and i usually get really good castings out of it so this is what I do. This is a plastic um, dirt mixing, like, I don't even know what you call this. I know that my husband got me this so I can prepare my dirt for the garden or for planting. You mix everything here. It's very spacious, but it's perfect for harvesting the worm castings the way I like to do it. So what I do is I take a scoop of the worms, casting everything. I put it in here, and I go like this. I start shaking it and I get all these castings see with eggs that's one way I harvest another way I harvest is I come over here to my farm and if I have a tray underneath this one I go like this to the castings with the lid off and it starts to dry out the worms a little bit like not the worms the casting it dries them out a little bit and it drives the worms down into the next tray and after I do this for a while the castings start to get really fine like all the little clumps will like break up and then I scoop it out and I put it in one of these things now sometimes when the castings are too wet it's hard to shake them out on this thing because they get stuck so I think since since this is it needs to be worked a little bit what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the other tray back under and I'm gonna start drying this one out and then when I'm ready to sift this I'll continue um, showing you that process so I'm going to put them back in here and every day I will come down here and do this to it every day see clumps like this I break them up gently because I don't want to like pop any eggs and you know hurt the worms so I go like this every day and you'll see that every day it starts to get finer look look how they get when you when you mess with them a little bit they kind of ah, I'm sorry little guy they kind of get um, aggravated when you mess with them yours are very like moody um, the red wigglers I think are more tolerant but they're really amazing worms if you're into worms this is definitely one look off the last tray and look what I found underneath euros down here and the wetness very moist so what I do is I just take them and I pop them back in the tray and I don't care that they're down here I just want to get the castings some some worms like it more moist so they'll come down here and hang out um, and that's okay with me so I'm gonna put back the tray that I want them to go into I'm gonna put that in 
Now, the way I'm going to lure them down, besides light, is I'm going to add some worm chow to this to lure them back down. So what I do is I moisten it. A little bit of water. Now, if you take water from your sink, let it sit a, a little a couple of days in your bottle before you use it. Just to get the chemicals out or any alcohol or bleach or whatever the heck water contains today. So this is some warm chow. So I go like this. I just give it a sprinkle. We're sprinkling. And the food will lure them down. They'll say, ha, dinner time. So I always wet it down a little bit because it's very dry, the food, and you want them to eat it. And believe it or not, this in like a day or two will be gone. These big guys have big appetites. So let's get them, let's mix them up a little bit more and we're gonna, we're gonna wait for them to go down. See the, the casting that was at the bottom is wet, very wet. All right, I brought you in a little closer. Worm castings, it's an amazing fertilizer. You can use it to start your vegetables in the spring. I never plant vegetable seeds in this 100% pure because it's very strong. I usually mix it with my dirt, my potting soil. Sometimes I'll do half and half, half worm castings and half potting soil, or I'll do a quarter worm casting, the other part, you know, potting soil. It really, really makes your plants very healthy. And you'll notice the color of your vegetables is very rich and dark. Like when I grow tomatoes in my garden, I can tell immediately the difference between a garden tomato and one of those tomatoes you get at the store. They're just not the same. I'm seeing a lot of cocoons in here. Here's another one. See, that's a cocoon. See how light in color it is? That was probably laid not too long ago. Now, sometimes you will find worms in your worm farm doing the hanky panky occasionally I have come across them and when I do find them I try not to disturb them because well you know they're creating more worms for me so I leave them alone <laughs> but you will see them and the way you know that they're um, breeding is they'll be like intertwined they look like they're like twisted together um, but they're just creating magic so these are some nice healthy worms so this is what I'm gonna do now tonight since I've disturbed them so much and I know that euros are kinda moody I'm gonna leave the light on overnight because I'm afraid if I turn the light off with the lid off they're just gonna come out and start crawling everywhere and I'm gonna have a million worms everywhere and then in the morning I'll have to go catch them all so they don't die. Sometimes when they leave the farm, you know, they do die. And um, then you'll have to replenish your stock, you know. I don't like doing that too much. So let's see. Maybe in the spring, if I have a lot of worms, I'll do a worm giveaway. How would you guys like that? Comment below if you want European night crawlers. That'll be cool. Maybe I'll do a, a major worm giveaway when I reach like my first, um, I don't know, 500 subscribers. I think that'd be cool. So here you go. Mix, mix, mix. I even it out, spread it out. I've been vermicomposting for let's see 16 years now 17 years yeah <laughs> I learned from a lady on YouTube I I had no idea I I had one of those ancient 
dinosaur computers. I learned from a lady on YouTube. Her name, her channel name, she doesn't make videos anymore. Her channel name is Christy Ruffner, I believe. And she has, she, her videos were so cool. I still watch some of them. And she's, she explains everything really well. And I learned from her. I believe I bought my first worm factory from her and my first set of worms. And they were red wigglers. And oh my gosh, they did beautiful. I remember the first time um, I actually saw like castings finished like this. I was so excited. Of course, it took me like three hours to harvest the farm because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. But it was fun. All right. All right, guys, sorry to bother you. People want to learn how to do this. All right. So I'll keep you guys updated on this. Here we are. This is day two of the sifting of the castings. So as you can see, there are no worms in here. They've gone down deep into the next tray, I'm sure. So this is what we do. We just keep mixing it like this. Oh, there's a few still left up here. They'll go down. That way it dries it out a little bit. I mean, even overnight. Look, it's already getting there. This is fun. I enjoy it. <laughs> you could tell people, I like playing with poop. No, don't do that. They think you're crazy. Anyway, <laughs> as you can see, it's getting finer and finer. So we're getting there. So the last time I recorded, I was filming a video dealing with the castings of the European Nightcrawlers. And I remember saying that in my Worm Factory 360, it was empty. I hadn't done anything with it. Worms had died. I thought, well, there's nothing in there. <laughs> I uncovered the lid, and I'm, you're not going to believe it. I I'll show you. Okay, here's the Worm Factory 360. If you look up close, let me see if I can move them. There are worms in here. And they're still alive. I had red wigglers in here. Look at that. They're a little sluggish and a little slow. That's probably because this this has been neglected. I thought they all died. I had no clue. Oh my gosh. Alright, so what I'm going to do is... It needs water. I'm going to get them going again. I mean, why not? We can neglect them. And I'm going to give them strips of wet newspaper. As bedding. And we're going to check on these guys also. So I went and got some worm chow. So we're going to give them a sprinkle. I'm not going to put a whole lot because I'm not even sure how many are in here. So anytime you add worm chow, you got to spritz them. That stuff is dry. All right. Red wigglers are at it again. I'll keep you guys updated. Here we are, day four. As you can see, it's fluffy, it's drying out. I'm almost ready to harvest. Look how beautiful that is. Nice and dark. There's nothing like it. I'll take you for an up-close shot so you can really see. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Well, here we go. Time to harvest some of the stuff. Now, I have this sifter. My husband got me this on Amazon. The holes are great for um, the castings to fall through, 
but they're a little big for the eggs so the eggs are going to end up falling through but that's okay so basically what i do is i take a bunch of castings i mean look how beautiful they are right i take a bunch of castings and i just start shaking it shake 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 see and you're left with that but you have this gorgeous black casting so i'm gonna do that and i'll bring you guys back let me show you the castings i have this paper was on the floor of the tray that they were in i mean look at this gorgeous so now this is the tray that was underneath the one i just harvested and if we look here I had put some corn and they're eating it but then I fed over here you can see that they're in here eating it also well, they're doing well so out of curiosity I looked underneath the tray and the floor and look at them down here they're everywhere so I'm going to remove these from here, put them here. Now you say, well, what's the next step? So I'm going to come here. I'm going to put that one on top and they'll keep working this. And then when I start feeding that other tray, they're going to migrate up. And these are European night crawlers. Everyone has told me that they don't migrate up. Mine do. And I'm sure if you try it, yours will too. This is the castings that was left in the little mesh, both meshes I used. It's still clumpy, so I'll throw that back in there too so they can keep working at it. And I'll keep you guys updated.